Long sweeping motions. Long sweeping motions. It's like a workout. Think about Jagger's size. Jane Fonda. Sweat into the oldies with Richard Simmons. Hello Snack Pack, welcome back to Travel Snacks. In today's episode, I paint my van. In today's video, I show you how we prepared the van for painting, what we used to paint the van, and how it ended up looking at the end. Just a little hint, it doesn't go as planned, but that's typical for this van build. If you're thinking about painting a van or a vehicle, there's some good tips in this episode, so let's jump right in. We are not professionals. If you follow any of the things we do in this video, it's at your own risk. When I first bought my van, I didn't love the color. It felt kind of old and outdated to me. Plus the vinyl striping was flaking off and chipping and it just didn't look nice. I also thought it would probably be a better idea to paint it white so it looked more like a work truck when I was on the road. So in my head, I knew that I was gonna paint it all along. So when my dad and I were raising the roof, we dripped kind of a lot of stuff on it. Fiberglass resin, foam, adhesive, all kinds of stuff. But all Always in my mind I was like well it doesn't matter because we're gonna be sanding it down and painting it anyways so early on I asked if my mom could scrape off the vinyl striping because it was just flaking off anyways so she did that pretty early on towards the middle of the van build I was like man this van build is taking way longer than I thought and I was like well maybe I should just leave it silver and then paint it a different time so I could just get on the road but we had dripped so much stuff on it I was like well we should just sand it down anyways so towards the end of the van build, we all took our hand at sanding it down. I sanded it a little, my dad did it, my mom did it, even my friend Ivana and Lamont did it. And we finally got it all sanded down. At the end of the van build, I was just so tired and so over the whole process that I was like, let's just get all the things done that has to get done for me to get on the road. And painting was not at the top of the list, but because we had sanded it down, it looked really rugged and really just kind of, so I started calling around to some of the places that I know are a little bit cheaper, like for example, Mako. And I thought that it was gonna be like maybe $500, but because it's a bigger vehicle, a van with a lot of windows, it was gonna be about $1,000. And I was like, I'm not paying a thousand dollars to paint this van. And then my dad was like, well, we could just spray paint. And I was like, spray paint? That is so tacky. No, heck no. And then I was on the YouTubes and I saw Van City Van Life. I saw that Chrome had spray painted with rattle cans his van. And his van is roughly around the same size as mine. It's not like a huge sprinter van. And so I was like, hmm, maybe my dad was right. Maybe we can spray paint this thing. I really enjoy Chrome's channel and I think he always has really good ideas and very practical ideas. So I was like, if he can do it, I can do it. So I wrote down the name of the paint that Chrome used and went over to Napa Auto Parts. When I was there, they did have the duplicolor. It's gloss white but they had their Napa Auto brand and they were like, this is pretty much the exact same paint. It's gloss white, but it's $1.50 a can cheaper. And so you know how I like to be frugal. So I was like, yes, please. So I think they were about $6.50 a can. I can't remember exactly, but that was about $170. And I was like, that seems like a pretty good deal. So in his video, he used 22 cans and I was like, well, I have a raised roof, so maybe we'll need more. So let's just get 25 cans to start. So after removing all the vinyl striping and sanding it down, we took it to the driveway and gave it a good wash and dry. We wanted to make sure that there wasn't any residue on there, so we also wiped it down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol as well. From there, we let it sit in the sun for a few hours to make sure that everything was dry and ready to go. So after that, we took some rosin paper and some painter's tape and we masked off all the windows and all the areas that we didn't want to get paint. This took several hours and you never think it's gonna take that long, but when you're trying to mask everything off in great detail, it really does take quite a while. And at first we weren't sure exactly how to mask everything off, but I thought it would be a good idea to seal off the edges and then put the rosin paper in the middle. So you're going to put the tape around it and then put the paper in the middle. Yeah. Okay. So it's gonna be a lot harder to try to do all the paper. Around it, correct. Well, you're doing a really good job, Allie. So we will go from our way to that way, take around the edges, and then put the paper on top. 
once we masked off the passenger side, we drove the van over to a corner of my parents' yard that gets a little bit less wind and we put a tarp against the fence. This isn't an ideal situation for painting because this is the desert and there's sand and dust all over the place. Plus we had to wait for a non-windy day, which this was the winter time and there was never really a day that didn't have a lot of wind. So we just had to go for it because this was kind of the last couple days before I left on my journey. From here, we finished masking off all the windows and then putting some painter's plastic over the tires. And then because we wanted to spray the top roof part, we needed to cover the solar panels and the Max Air fan. It took so long to get everything masked off that it was later in the day before we even got started spraying and so I lost a couple of my helpers along the way but my mom and I were determined to get the first coat going so we got out there and started spraying away. And this is why it's going to take more than one coat because this is a scratch coat. Yeah. You have to just go like this. Hold it about that close. Okay. Let's get it like a little tacky, you know? Long sweeping motions. Long sweeping motions. It's like a workout. Think about jogger size. Jane Fonda. Sweat into the oldies with Richard Simmons. One can down. 85 to go. Yep. It wasn't very long after my mom got going that she was like, oh heck no, this is too much on my hands. And it really is a lot because you're constantly squeezing the grip handle and it's just a lot of strain on your hands and wrists. They don't tell you that your hands start to cramp up when you're painting a lot with these cans. This handle helps, but your hands are going to start getting blisters and start cramping up. So I taped them with blue tape, but it still hurts. So I'm going to have to stop soon. Okay, this is what the van looks like after... I don't even know how many... <laughs> What's happening here? This is what the van looks like after... I don't know however many coats because I just keep going over the same thing over and over. A lot of coats. But it's getting dark and cold. I have paint all over my <laughs> face. So far I've used one, two, eight cans and we have 25. So we may need some more, but I think we'll see tomorrow. This one I've gone over the most and it's looking pretty nice. This right here was the last day and the night before I was leaving to head to Texas. So we really had to get it done. And as you can see, we got to the end of the spray cans and knew it just wasn't going to be enough. After we were done, I went back to Chrome's video and I was like, what did we do wrong? So here are a few possible reasons why my van didn't turn out as good as Chrome's. Number one, his van started out white, so maybe spraying white over white, it covers a little bit better. Number two, he did a lighter sand. We pretty much went all in with the sander and really got it pretty much down to the metal. So we might have had better luck if we used a primer coat first. Number three, maybe the Duplicolor paint brand is much better than the Napa Auto Parts. Who knows? But that could be a factor in this case. And number four, maybe we should have used all 25 cans on the body and skipped the roof since we could do that at a later time just to see if the 25 cans would have covered the whole body because when we did the roof, it is very porous and it absorbed the paint like a sponge. As you can see, 25 cans of spray paint was not enough. It just barely scratched the surface. <laughs> so there's a lot of streaking. This top part looks the worst. Plus I'm gonna need to do some more fiberglassing and touch-ups so I figured I might as well wait on that. It doesn't look terrible but it doesn't look great. It's probably gonna take another 25 cans. <laughs> So now that the van is painted and doesn't look so great, what have I decided to do? Okay, well, first of all, one happy accident is that my van roof was leaking. So I got a ladder and some roof sealant and went to town. So now the van roof looks so much nicer because it's white. And even though it's not the spray paint, it just makes the whole thing look a lot nicer. At some point along my journey, I think I'm gonna go buy a few cans of the Duplicolor mask off one side of the van 
and just spray paint that side and see if it achieves the look that I'm going for. That nice glossy sheen that looks a little bit thick and just really more professional, even though I'm not a professional. And the last thing that I wanna do is the bottom section of the van. I wanna use some textured black paint and make a nice little border around it. So it'll look a lot nicer and the contrast between the black and the white should make it look a bit more modern. I'll keep you posted. But in the meantime, I'm still happy that we spray painted it because it did save a lot of money. And at the end of the day, what matters most is the inside of the van and how I feel along my journey. Snack time. Snack time.